SABC News reporter Bulelani Philip is at the conference and joins us live from Cape Town. Bulelani, good afternoon to you. Those are serious uh, allegations that uh, the minister is saying about how NGOs are not declaring. Take us through um, what he had found in order for him to come up with that realization. Well, good afternoon to you, Diabo, and to the viewers at home. Paul, perhaps maybe to start off here is that uh, just shortly before you arrived here at the Cape Town International Convention Center, as it's customary, there was a handful of protesters uh, of people who are opposed to the use of fossil fuels who are actually calling on the South African government to actually begin you know, exploring the path of renewable energies. And of course, in his speech, uh, it's not new uh, that uh, he wants uh, NGOs to actually declare their funders, but he's arguing that uh, these donors are being used by foreign funders to actually block development, uh, not only here in South Africa, but on the African continent. Of course, again, reiterating that uh, he wants them, like political parties, to declare their funders. Of course, uh, Minister Mantasha used this occasion to actually sell the country as well as ask uh, any investors that are interested in doing business with South Africa to come as he laid out the plan uh, of the country in terms of development. Of course, there are other issues that are coming out here on the sidelines of this conference, Diabo. Uh, now joining me is Dr. Uh, Farouk uh, Ibrahim, uh, who is the Secretary General of the African Petroleum Producers Association. Firstly, you're gathering here to discuss issues of uh, uh, oil and gas, uh, but uh, globally there is this buzzword that's going around of just energy transition. As the petroleum industry, are you guys uh, you know, committed to this just energy transition? It's funny when you guys talk about globally. The global agenda is set by people who have developed or determined their national interests. And those interests cannot be imposed on everybody, particularly when we talk of climate change. Climate change is a problem caused by a particular group of developed countries. They, for over a period of 120 years, were burning fossil fuels like it's going out of existence, and they used it to get their countries developed, industrialized, and they raised the living standards of their people. So are you opposed uh, to this issue of uh, moving towards renewable energy? No, we are not. We are not opposed to it. But what we are saying is the timing, the speed with which they want the whole world to move is just not fair. They can do that because they've already gotten to a point that they are comfortable, their people are comfortable, they are not in poverty. We have been producing oil and gas for them. We, they say, have contributed only 3% to the emissions. Now, and we today have a vast majority of our people living without access to energy. Why would we be denied the right to have access to energy so that we can improve the living conditions of our people? You seem to place the blame squarely on the West in terms of uh, these uh, you know, uh, carbon emissions uh, that are not uh, going down. Uh, in your view, going forward, what would you like to see them doing in terms of being equitable, in terms of uh, reducing carbon emissions? Look, you can't look forward without going back. You, for you to see the challenge, you have to see where we are coming from. We are today in the mess we are in today because for a period of 120 years, the developed countries have emitted 25 2,500 gigatons of emissions into the atmosphere. It is this legacy emission that is causing climate change, not what we are going to produce today or tomorrow. And all we are saying is, if you are really concerned about the climate, the environment, which is a common patrimony for all of us, you have the technology to remove some of the mess in terms of emissions that you have put up there, the 2,500, remove even 20%, 500 uh, gigatons, the world will not be saturated with emissions the way it is today. And that will also give poorer African countries the opportunity to use the same form of energy that you use to get industrialized so that we can also get industrialized. There is no way 
Africa is going to get industrialized with renewable energy in the next 30, 40 years. Should they accept the aid from the West in terms of funding this project of the just energy transition? Once again, let me say this. Africa should win itself from this belief that unless you get help from the developed countries, you can't move forward. These aids are really the biggest factors making us not to move forward. I don't believe in aids. What I think they should do is ask the people to keep their money, but they should commit to removing the mess that they have created. Lastly, how far are you in terms of establishing the African Energy Bank? Okay, the African Energy Bank is a project that we went into our partnership with the um, Exim Bank to establish, realizing that the countries on whom we have depended in the last 50 to 100 years for finance to do our oil and gas projects have decided to abandon us because of energy transition. At the time, we have more than 125 billion barrels of proven oil reserves and over 600 trillion cubic feet of gas. And at a time that Africa has the largest proportion of its people living in energy poverty. Are we going to leave all these resources simply because those who have been funding have decided not to? We said no. We have to raise the funds and we believe that we have the resources. And like you heard me say today, when we started this, many people didn't believe that we were serious because they felt, why is Africa going to get the money? And in two years, and this, by the time we establish this bank, this will be the fastest bank that has been established from conception to reality. All right, thank you so much. We're out of time, Dr. Omar Farouk Ibrahim, who is the Secretary General of the African Petroleum Producers Association. On that note, Diabo, we'll cross back to you in studio.